Hi, so today I'm going to be taking a look at some new Hope Evo cranks. So this is basically Hope's revised crank system where they've simplified the install and removal process of the cranks. So what I'll do is I'll change the camera and we'll take a look at them. So it just comes in this fairly minimalist Hope box and on the back here it's got the version that you've gone for. So they've got this in a few different configurations depending on what your needs are. So they sell it with uh, just the arms and they also sell it with the spider as well as with a chain ring depending on what you need as well as in different axle lengths so let's just have a look in the box so you've got the drive side arm here some fitting instructions hope sticker the lock ring tool for fitting the chain rings some pedal washers and then you've got the non-drive side which has got a little bit of uh, kinky fishnet on. So these are just a revised version of the Hope Cranks, hence the name Evo. The original Hope Crank was notorious for being a slight inconvenience to fit, to put it mildly. It had uh, a number of tools and was just overly complicated to fit and remove. So they've cut this right back now, you just need a 10mm Allen key to fit and remove it. Ideally, I wish it was an 8mm, but it is what it is. So, on the actual crank arm, this is uh, laser etched in, and then this is cut away here, because obviously this is where your foot generally tends to rub, so it's already taken away and built into the design, so it looks nice, and it should look nice after it's been used for a bit. And then they just cut out at the back here where they're machined. I believe these are forged and then machined out. And then on this side is where you actually attach the chain ring. This is just threaded on with a spacer and that's where you use the tool which you just lock in, tighten it up. And then on the non-drive side it's got the axle and these are removable and replaceable so if you say move to a um, from a trail bike to a downhill bike and you want to have a wider axle or from a trail to a fat bike you can swap them over and keep your crank arms without having to rebuy a whole new set and then here is the preload collar which uses a two and a half mil allen key to fit i will say with these these are handy these preloads because they are metal and if you've ever had a race face or a shram one which use a plastic preload collar. These are terrible, <laughs> to say the least, and I don't understand on an expensive crank why they continue to cut costs on this. What, what happens is when you fit them, they are fine, but if you have to remove them um, more than two or three times, the plastic tends to crack because the screw is threading into it, and um, you end up having to replace that. It's just a real inconvenience, and it's nice that Hope are using some metal ones on theirs. So, just have a brief look at the fitting instructions. Should be hope stuff's normally nicely laid out and straightforward. So, I'm going to be running a Hope 34 tooth oval ring. I've got it for the uh, boost configuration. Uh, so, just get this out. So, it's just the chain ring with some fitting instructions. You can get uh, other brand chain rings if you want to run them. I just thought I'd get the Hope one to uh, tie it in. So basically what you've got to do is line up this notch here with the crank arm. So take the crank arm, remove the lock ring and the washer. Then you want to line up the notch with the inside of the crank arm and then you need to Fit the washer, fit the lock ring back on, then use the tool to torque it up. You can use a, as you can see, a standard bottom bracket tool, or you can use, I believe it's a 38 mil spanner, or you could do it in a vise. But anyway, get it torqued up, and then you've got your chain ring on. So what I'm going to do is I'll change the camera and then I'll show you what this is like to actually fit onto the bike. So let's do a quick check of the weight. So the crank arms, the 
pedal washers. And then the chain ring, obviously the weight of this will depend on what size you've got. Okay, so here I am in front of my bike. So I've just fitted a fresh bottom bracket. So the first thing I do is I take the non-drive side arm and then make sure that the bolt is undone on the preload collar so it uh, can move freely. And then I make sure it's backed out all the way onto the axle right next to the crank arm. Then I take some grease. I use Maxima waterproof grease. Other quality greases are available. So I like to put a liberal amount of it onto the axle and onto the splines. I find you can't go uh, too wrong with too much of this stuff because uh, I ride in the UK and Scotland mostly and uh, it tends to eat grease up. So I find if I put a decent amount on, even though it's a little bit sticky to start with, it tends to smooth out once you get into the use of the crank. So then just feed it in from the other side. Should just slide in nice and easy. You'll know when you've got it all the way through because you'll see there's a small shoulder here which the drive side is going to fit against. This screw is then going to, there's also a shoulder in here as well. So when you're tightening this up, what will happen is the screw will pull itself and pull the other side, uh, the non-drive side towards the drive side. And then you'll feel it um, actually bottom out and stop when you're in there. So you'll know when you've got the right amount of uh, tension on it. What I like to do is start with putting the crank arms on and then just make sure you've obviously got them opposite the other crank arm and then just start the threads off by hand just to make sure that you've uh, got them on and you're not going to cross thread it. And then once you've done that, just Talk it up. It's nice and easy to start with and then as it starts pulling you'll feel the tension increase but it shouldn't be too much, you shouldn't have to be putting too much effort into getting it to twist. So just keep going until it uh, bottoms out. Feel it. And then what you need to do is check that it's rotating smoothly. Obviously there's going to be some resistance because of the grease, but you want to just make sure that the bearings feel smooth and that it's rotating nice and easy. And then you need to check for any side to side play. So just grab both arms and then push them against each other. There shouldn't be any movement. And then what you're going to do is take the preload collar and just rotate that on the other side, take up any slack that there is. Not too much on mine. And then tighten that uh, two and a half mil bolt up and then you should be done. Obviously make sure that you've uh, got clearance. As you can see on this Evil, it's pretty tight to the frame, but it does have a chain guide that fits over there. so. It doesn't, uh, that's just as close as it gets. And I'm running a 34 oval, which is basically a 36. So this is sort of the maximum the frame will run. So it's pretty close. As you can see, the swing arm's pretty thick anyway. So once you've got that on, make sure that your chain line is good and then you should be up and running. So I'm gonna be running some crank boots on these. So I'm just gonna use some race face ones. This is the small size or they, sometimes refer to them as the aluminium ones or alloy ones. And what you basically do to get these on is just fit your pedal washer on first and just scoop your little boot on. And then thread your pedal in. So it's a look at Hope's Evo cranks. So if you've got any uh, comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the box below. Thumbs up are always appreciated. And thanks for watching.